Hey everyone, welcome back to Yuan's channel. Today we'll be continuing our repeat psychology course and today we'll be talking about Unit 4.3, Operant Conditioning, which is one of the three main types of learning and we'll talk about um, the first type, Classical Conditioning, in our last video. So please check it out if, have, if you haven't watched that one yet. Um, so as we find out, um, it's the learning naturally born we are, or as we grow up and become more mature, more mature we learn to, we start to learn how to learn. Do you want to find out the reason behind this? So I hope you this I hope this and um this video can answer the question for you. So yeah, let's begin. So operant conditioning refers to when behavior leads to an environmental response, which affects the likelihood of the behavior happening again. One of the earliest contributors to the aspect of learning was A. L. Thorndike, who found that behaviors that had a favorable outcome became stronger. Um, vice versa, behaviors that had an unfavorable outcome became weaker. He referred to this as his law of effect. B.F. Skinner took his principle further and described this, um, different types of consequences that can occur and how they could affect the presentation of the behavior. He created what is called a Skinner box, where animals in the box only receive food if they press a lever. Um, the food was used as a reinforcer, using the food as the reinforcement. So reinforcing behavior means that there is a greater likelihood that the behavior will occur again. Contrarily, punishing a behavior will create a lessened probability that the behavior will happen again. In the box, oh, I'm sorry, describing the behavior as positive does not indicate um, it is good. Um, on the, um, similarly, if it is negative, it doesn't mean it is bad. Rather, the use of the word positive suggests the presence of a result, whereas negative indicates the absence or disappearance. Thus, when a behavior is positively reinforced, it means something is presented, usually something pleasant, to increase the likelihood of the behavior happening again. When something is negatively reinforced, something is taken away, usually unpleasant, to encourage that behavior to happen again. When something is positively punished, um, something is presented, usually unpleasant, making the behavior happen less often. In contrast, something negatively punished has something taken away, usually something pleasant, to make that behavior happen less often. Um, Skinner used negative and positive reinforcement and punishment to train the rats inside the Skinner box, but sometimes we can't wait forever for the rats to learn. So in order to speed up the process, we can use shaping. Shaping reinforces the steps to reach and the end goal. For example, the rat could be um, reinforced for touching the lever with, uh, with any part of its body because we're rewarding any behavior close to the behavior we want. We have a greater chance of getting the rat to stumble upon the behavior we want. There is also something called chaining. When the animals are trained enough, they can perform multiple tasks in order to get the reward. A good example of this would be going through an obstacle course to get the final reward. Um, so here are some basic um, conditioning phenomena and this describes the process of um, operant conditioning. So first is acquisition. Rat learns to press the food lever for food. Extinction is, happens when the rat unlearns the connection between the lever and the food and the rat, the rat stops pressing the lever. Spontaneous recovery happens after a period of rest without the learned behavior and thus the rat, the rat press, pr presses the lever. Generalization is when the rat presses anything that looks like a lever, thinking it will give it food. And finally we have discrimination. Unlike, it's not like about stereotypes, it's a different thing. Um, but in discrimination, in operant conditioning, the rat learns to only press a certain lever. So here are some limitations to operant conditioning. Despite stringent behaviorist claims, there are limitations. When presented, represented with a puzzle, some, some organisms can discover the solution to the problem without proper reinforcement or punishment. This is to do um, inside learning. When one solution suddenly comes into mind and you realize the solution to the problem. Um, so this is sometimes referred to as an aha moment. Um, so Edward Holman found that rats did not show any noticeable improvement in getting through a maze in the absence of reinforcement. However, when reinforcement was provided, he found a mark be marked decrease in the time needed to finish a maze, suggesting that the rats knew the solution to the maze but did not express it behaviorally, meaning that they had a cognitive map of the maze. Holman called this Latin learning. So please keep in mind that Latin learning where cognitive map will, map will sometimes come up in the cog multiple transaction and it will ask usually I remember there was a question like this like this um, taxi driver and he has um, he doesn't need to look at the map 
Google Map on his phone in order to drive the customer to wherever the customer wants to go. He just have this map um, generalized or in his map in his mind, and he just like pull up that part of the memory of the map and then start driving. And this is all like stored in his memory because he been doing this for so many times. So this is part of a cognitive map. Not all types of stimuli were necessarily conditioned with all types of responses. John Garcia, which we mentioned in our last video, found that people are more readily predisposed to be conditioned to taste if the corresponding response is internal. For example, the behavioral response of nausea is more likely to be conditioned to a taste stimulus than external stimulus such as a sound. Other research has shown that cognitive Cognitive interpretations of conditioning also play a role. If a person believes that a particular stimulus as opposed to the intended stimuli, stimulus causing the conditioning, then the stimulus de designed to produce the conditioning will not occur. So for the reinforcement schedules, by the way, this screenshot is taken from the website Fiveable and the study guides of AP Psych, so it's really helpful. And if you have a like a review or like this, um, Fiveable is a really good source in, for you to do review and like um, just go over all the content again. So the probability of successful operative conditioning depends on how the reinforcement are pre presented. When something is produced on a fixed schedule, reinforcement occurs in a predictable but not continuous pattern. One knows when the subsequent reinforcement will be given, assuming behaviors are reperformed. When reinforcement is presented on a variable schedule, it means that reinforcement is not predictable and it is not apparent when the next reinforcement will exactly occur. When reinforcement is given on an inter interval schedule, it means a certain amount of time must pass by, assuming the behavior is performed before re reinforcement is given. When reinforcement is given on a racial schedule, a certain number of behaviors must be performed before the reinforcement is provided. So here comes the end of our video today. Thank you for listening and I hope you learned something new. Um, please subscribe and like this video if you enjoy the content and I will produce more high quality videos in the future.